Sure, Jeff, thank you for having me uh, on the spaces. Uh, Nair, great talk, uh, difficult to follow up uh, after such uh, an amazing, amazing talk. Uh, but yeah, my name is Dimitri, uh, co-founder of QuickNode. Uh, we are a Web3 infrastructure and developer platform. Um, our, our team comes from uh, nearly two decades experience in the uh, web hosting and uh, data center and distributed system space. So um, a couple of years ago, we decided to like, how do we apply that uh, experience and knowledge uh, to this next iteration, this next layer of the web, which is the Web3. Um, and we noticed uh, back in 2017 that there was a lack of options and uh, frankly, lack of robust uh, infrastructure uh, to provide um, data to applications that were building uh, with, with the data being on the blockchain. So that's how QuickNote got started. And um, and so, what? What? How has this journey been for you? And you know, how um, based on the the vision that you first saw versus the practical reality of where you're at, um, you know, what what is your learning been along the way? Uh, it's it's beyond anything we could have imagined. Uh, especially last year has been tremendous for 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 all of blockchain for the entire Web three space. Um, I mean, we we noticed that there was smoke and that there would eventually be fire because. There was that there was promise in smart contracts and what blockchain enabled um, from things like DAOs and business models that were simply were not possible before um, tokenization and having decentralized finance. Like we've seen a lot of pain points uh, in 2020, in 2021, where blockchain makes total sense. Uh, it, it's just that maybe it was a little primitive, it was a little early, and I'm glad that. Um, a uh, quick note and, and our team here are able to contribute to the growth of the Web3 space and enable developers and enable businesses to adopt blockchain technology at a much faster pace. And so when you see um, these these bigger corporations today embracing it today, I feel like it's because of these experiments, it's because of these sparks that uh, tool tools like what we built enable that blockchain and, and Web3 is going mainstream. Well, it certainly seems to be going mainstream, although we're, if, it, if it's a baseball game, I think we're still in the first inning in many ways. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, the thing is, I thought you were going to say a different word. You know, smoke and fire means, you know, it's much more powerful than smoke and mirrors. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, been there no, before no, no. with yeah. the mirror part. So, it, it, it's nice that we're, we're getting forward. And, you know, I'm just, you know, could you be a little more specific? And you know, for people who are learning, there are a lot of people here from the Web2 world that are, are inspired enough to join us, and they know strategically Web3 is their future. Could, could you go uh, a little detail and, and share, um, you know, if, if someone has is living in the Web2 world today and they want to be in, you know, they want to make that transition to to, to be where the future will, is evolving towards. Uh, what specifically do you do? Uh, uh, a quick note that helps move that process along. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I had pre uh, prepared some slides. Uh, unfortunately, the Twitter spaces doesn't work with slides, but um, you, Jeff, if, uh, want, if you want to tweet them, I'll be happy to retweet and perhaps, you know, people can follow along uh, on the replay as well as now if, if you want. Okay, sure. Uh, I'll do that. But basically, let's say uh, on your Web3 journey, uh, at some point, whether you're working with uh, a JavaScript library or a Python library, um, or, or a Java library, whatever it is, you will encounter a point where you'll need to connect to a node. Um, and nodes are essentially gateways to the Web3. This is the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, software that's used to access and append data to the ledger. So at, at, if you think of this as a pyramid, at the very top you have uh, your, your users, um, which then interact with uh, wallet softwares like MetaMask, Rainbow, uh, Phantom uh, or mobile applications uh, like CryptoKitties um, or OpenSea, um, which then talk to something like a backend, uh, like I mentioned, Web3.js, Web3.j, Web3.py, uh, Ethers.js. Um, and then those, uh, th those uh, libraries then talk to nodes. Um, and, and nodes are the keepers of blockchain data, whether that's uh, the latest block data or that's historical data. So uh, if your app is looking for like what's what's the latest block what's the latest info i want to send this uh update to our to my user asap or is this um hey i need i need to know the balance of this smart contract or this uh account 
uh, a million blocks ago uh, for, for, for whatever reason. So uh, the node stores things like um, block and transaction info, account balances, smart contract details, smart contract events like token transfers, NFT transfers. Um, and then you also use a node uh, as a means of sending transactions or submitting transaction to the blockchain um, and like to, to, to deploy smart contracts. Uh, and the challenge there is, uh, let's say you're, you're a front end developer and you, you don't really know the command line really well, or you don't understand, uh, or like you're not a sysadmin. You, you, you just want to get going. You want to build, you have this idea in your head and you want to build the app. You don't want to go through the whole challenge of, uh, getting cloud or a cloud, like finding a cloud provider, figuring out what kind of specs you need, um, and, and all that, uh, this is this is what we build quick node um it, it requires a lot of effort to set up uh like ethereum nodes a lot of nodes polygon nodes uh, etc and that wastes a lot of valuable time getting to market you probably might you know depending on your skill level you might spend a day setting it up it, it, it might take you longer uh and there's also things you got to consider like uh sync time you know you don't just get the blockchain right away uh especially if you're thinking about archival data that might take you weeks or, or months to, uh, to, to sync uh, with, with the state. So what we do is we manage all that for you uh, and it just, you get instant access to a platform where you can uh, get access to uh, 11, today 11 different blockchains and you can start building right away. It's one line of, uh, one line of code that you plug in. Um, most most uh, libraries out there today, they just ask for like a RPC provider uh, or RPC URL. And we take a, we take care of the heavy lifting uh, on the back end. And so, um, for, for somebody who is you know literally an let's say someone's doing building enterprise applications right now, and they're in the dev side of a medium sized enterprise, and it's they're part of their systems group. Uh, how many you know you know, and now they're assigned. Okay, figure out Web three for us. Uh, I, I you know I, I I having been in that world a long time ago there is part of me that says well we have to experience things first to appreciate the tools out there because we have to well me anyway i mean, i want to go out and see where i get um see where the boundaries are but on the other hand we want to be as efficient as possible so you know for 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 your platform and you know more generally speaking you know uh how much uh knowledge experience does uh, one need to uh deploy the right person to start building these tool sets to then help solve these to you know, not, not so much to bring the applications from from today into tomorrow, but to really rethink the problem solving so that we get to leverage the benefits of Web three today versus just propagating a solution that's old, which maybe there's a much more efficient way to do it. Uh, so definitely a learning curve uh, into getting Web three. You obviously have to get familiar with with the, uh, the, the new languages and the new tooling, um, but. At, at an enterprise, uh, you, you ultimately have to build, you have, you have to make a decision at some point. Okay, so, so you'll go and try to run a node and you, you, you pull one person, second person, and you'll realize that it takes a really long time to do this. And it's not just like a one-time thing. There are hard forks, there are client updates. Um, things break all the time. This is open source software. It's highly <laughs> experimental. So you're, you're looking like, and if you're trying to do this at scale, like if you're doing billions of requests per day, um, you know, if, if you're, if, if you are uh, an enterprise that's looking to move a significant chunk, um, of your operations in, into the blockchain, uh, you're looking at a full time dev, uh, DevOps team. Uh, and, oh, and for sure. I mean, for sure. And, and, and talk about production environments. I mean, where I used to work on Wall Street, we had the production environment and then we had a production test network and, uh, mm -hmm. the, the test network was actually just as production as production network. And so we needed a third network to actually do our dev work. And <laughs> cause you don't want to touch stuff that's being demoed to certain people. So, um, uh, so, so I, I, I guess I was just asking, you know, I, I appreciate the complexity here, but at the same time, it seems like, you know, you're taking things that are otherwise would be incredibly time consuming and you're actually, you know, you're break you're lowering that time. And, uh, you know, I, uh, oh, for sure. so, so there's, right. There's that, um, and 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 you know, for someone who doesn't have the the depth or appreciation for the scale of what you guys do, you may they not may not appreciate the subtlety of the magic that you guys have. Um, uh, so so uh, for for the for the JavaScript developers here who are um, you know, or for the developers in here who are looking at you know sizing projects, um, well, how, what would be the best way to take some of the knowledge and and, and cumulative information that you've gathered over the years to build? what you've built and how could they best take advantage of it? 
Yeah, well, that, that's the great thing about our, our platform is you get enterprise grade infrastructure that's globally distributed. It's highly available. It's redundant, um, ma you know, ma massively scalable. Uh, and you just f focus on you get that right out of the box and you get things like analytics. Uh, you get security tooling. Um, uh, you get these higher level APIs, uh, like, like NFT APIs, um, pending transaction APIs, webhooks. You get all that out of the box. Uh, and you, you could be a bedroom developer. So the, the same, the same tools that are being used by these larger enterprises, uh, you, you have the power to, you have, you have the power to use the same, uh, the same platform and the same tooling. So, this helps you build the best version of your app. It helps you build it faster, get to market quicker, um, and at a, at a total lower cost. And because uh, I just don't know the the answer here, um, uh, when, when you know, I, I appreciate building. You know, I have a startup I'm doing in Web three, and you know, I'm looking at tools, and you know, I'm always looking at for public access to what we're doing because our survey, our you know, our customers are ultimately end users who can you know get to our website, but. Within the corporate enterprise, there's always that security firewall, and a lot of internet people who you know a lot of a lot of applications never see the light of day in the sense that in a hundred thousand person company that's that's I won't say galactic but global, um, they have tens of thousands of users, but it's all internal on their networks. Are the toolkits that are coming to market, you know, do they assume public access to the internet on one side, or do they can they function inside an internet, uh, you know, uh, a large corporate uh, you know firewalled environment? So we work with public blockchains, um, and I, I understand there's uh, closed networks and, and private blockchains being adopted within organizations, uh, which our system could find a use case. But right now, we're we're dealing with public blockchains. Public, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I had a conversation. I, I appreciate that because I, I said the same thing, but I got someone really aggravated at me. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I fundamentally believe the core tech can work inside. It just needs to be you know looked at separately. And uh, I didn't want to get into that very gnarly conversation about security and about firewalls and opening up holes and doing all sorts of other stuff. And so, but um, you know, as my old a friend of mine would say, theoretically, uh, with the right with the right uh, environment, uh, I'm imagining that the public, uh, you know, one could take a public blockchain, fork it, and run it inside a large, large firewall and. You know, it'd be, of course, separate from the rest of the world, but it could possibly function on its own. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I can imagine that you you can um, retrofit or or adopt a, a platform like ours within that. That's that would be like a custom setup. Uh, it's it's yes, it, it it is possible. I mean, the, the thing the, the thing about blockchain is it. It, it has its own security, um, and, and so uh, yes. you know what what we what we provide is is access to that data. So um, it, it's it, it's it still inherits the the, the security features um, of of the blockchain that that, that you're that you're accessing. Because when I, I had a conversation at the end of last year about big trends for 2022, and I marked it for a big tr trend of 2023 is the deployment of enterprise blockchain solutions. You know, uh, I, I figured this year would be a transitional year when some people start doing projects for medium, large size companies, but internal to them. And then the large deployments happen later, although, you know, in fintech and you know, in a bunch of Wall Street houses to have lots of stuff internal. Um, so do you um, how is how do you define community with the work that you do? Um, how do people you know, are, are you working directly with uh, with end, end users, with developers? Uh, who, who is your core community? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this is one of the, the greatest, uh, I guess, uh, things about being at the infrastructure level is anyone that needs access to the blockchain is, or, or is transacting, uh, interacting with the blockchain uh, will will use our service. So we have customers anywhere from your you know single developers to um, three or four person teams to funded businesses, all all the way up to uh, public companies. So. Um, from from your, uh, your your Coinbase, PayPal, and Twitter uh, to I mean one of our one of our uh, partners recently announced uh, they raised like sixty nine million dollars Dune Analytics um, and wow. we we've yeah we've grown with them from you know for for well over a year uh, they, I believe they came in with maybe just one one chain I think they were using Ethereum uh, to begin with and now they're they're I believe they're using all the chains we support which is Ethereum, Polygon, uh, Terra, Phantom, Solana, 
XDAI, Arbitrum, Optimism, uh, BSC, and 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 Celo. So uh, it's really it's motivating to to see projects that sign up uh, and start out as you know one or two person teams, then grow to raise mass massive amounts of money and really make make a difference in the world. What, what of the work that you do? What what excites you the most? Uh, the the fast and ever changing landscape. Uh, it's both. It's it's a challenge. It's a challenge, but it, it's a challenge that again. This is this is why our team wakes up every day because you you never know who's going to come through the door and uh, start working with blockchain. Like we're we're always. It, it's it's crazy to see the the kind of inbound that we're seeing um, from companies that you may not have thought would even consider entering the space, but they're you know. This is the direction that, that they want to take, and you know you're kind of seeing this play out with uh, you know Facebook and Microsoft recently, like really, really taking uh, blockchain and, and the whole like metaverse seriously. Yeah, well, I think for some it's a matter of survival that if you don't adopt, you die. And mm -hmm. you know, there, of course, there are going to be generations of people that are used to doing things a certain way, and for some people, that's all they care about. And you know, that's what makes the, makes life challenging and cha and interesting at the same time. Um, but I, you know, it's, it's, you know, you, you're kind of like a leading indicator as far as what to look forward to. And, uh, from what you're saying and perhaps not saying, it looks like the, it's a blue sky opportunity with, with, uh, greatness in front of us. And it's truly unbounded as far as how far it can go. Um, uh, we have just going to before I run out of time, are there, have you run into someone without saying the company, but doing something outside the box, wanting to use your, you know, your solutions, to develop something outside the box that you never conceived of prior yeah like like i mentioned in the, in the beginning that like blockchain and tokenization enables uh governance models and business models that were not possible before so like we, there was this one project that was doing uh governance on, on the blockchain based on meritocracy so if, if you if you held a certain uh nft or token whether that be like your your uh diploma or law degree or whatever uh, you you were able to participate in certain uh, voting on certain aspects of uh, you know whatever, whatever that was governing. Um, let's see, there, there was another one called uh, Fairmint, uh, which which also started with us a number a number of years back. I remember maybe twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Um, so they they developed a process to uh, do fundraising uh, legally within the U.S. Through tokenization, so you, you'd essentially they have the framework and the UI that you can go to their website, sign up, get a widget, put it on your website, and any visitor that uses your product can also become a stakeholder through through tokenization. Wow. Yeah, wow. it's 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 pretty, yeah, it's really fascinating. That is absolutely terrific, uh, Dimitri. If people want to follow up with you, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, sure. Well, uh, here on Twitter, um, send me a DM. DMs are open uh, for going down the rabbit hole on what we do. And, you know, we have over 100 different uh, guides that educate you on, like, sending your first transaction to building an NFT marketplace on Solana. Uh, that's quicknode.com and quicknode.com slash guides. Also, twitter.com slash quicknode. I mean, it's, it's, all in my, it's all in my bio, so check it out. Follow me. Um, keep an eye on what we're doing. Uh, the future is bright, super exciting. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's one of the best spaces uh, and, and fastest growing spaces uh, to be in right now.